Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another live iThemes Training uh, live stream webinar. My name is Nathan Ingram. I'm the host here at iThemes Training. And today it is plug-in roundup uh, here on uh, iThemes Training Solid Academy. Soon to be, we're going to flip that switch here in the next few weeks to come. Don't have an exact date yet, but it is coming. If you are just joining us in Zoom, open up the chat and say hello. I'm dropping in our link bundle one more time here before we get started. Uh, the plugin list is there waiting on you, as well as a live stream that we just got scheduled on Friday, and it's for tomorrow. So normally we like to give you a little bit longer of a, uh, a warning than just a couple of days, but uh, we had an opportunity to get Tom Rafe in, uh, and we decided to take it. So uh, my intention is to make this a regular um another one of our regular webinars that we have, if not monthly, then bi-monthly, something like that. But it's going to be a security roundup where we're looking at the emerging threats in the WordPress security world. Uh, we'll be having uh, featuring Thomas Rafe from We Watch Your Website. Uh, Tom was with us uh, several weeks ago talking about uh, some of the new issues in WordPress security. And everybody in the audience responded so well to him. And he's just a wonderful human being. And uh, we're going to see about uh, this regular webinar series for a few couple months, see how it goes, uh, see how you folks enjoy it. So we have a couple of months scheduled out. There's one for uh, October, which is tomorrow, and then also one for November that's on the books. Uh, so if you have not yet registered for this or haven't heard about it, there's the link in the chat. I'd invite you to join us tomorrow, one o'clock central time, and talk all about some new developments in uh, the WordPress security space. What makes Tom extraordinarily qualified for this is that in his uh, work at We Watch Your Website, this company uh, that he started way back in 2007, they currently manage 6 million WordPress sites. So you can imagine he's a guy that has his finger on the pulse of emerging threats in the WordPress world. So, uh, And he's just a great uh, e explainer of complicated things and just a really nice guy. So I'm really happy to have Tom and he'll be with us tomorrow. Uh, in, at least next month, we'll see how it goes from there. So if you are just now joining us in Zoom, pop open the chat, say hi, and uh, you'll find the link. I just dropped in one final time for this, our list of plugins for October 2023. And we'll get started with happy birthday to the plugin roundup. October is the birthday month because way back in 2014 is the very first month that I came up with this idea of, hey, why don't we take a look at the WordPress plugin directory and pull out a dozen or so plugins um, that look interesting uh, and share those and see what happens. And then we'll just start doing that on a regular basis. So that was nine years ago this month. And uh, it's been a fun ride. We've had a, a lot of fun with plugins uh, throughout these last nine years. And we haven't missed a month. Uh, we added the best of plugin roundup. Uh, I don't know, a few years in where about every six months we take a look at the previous six months and uh, highlight the ones we thought were the best. Pretty cool. Nine long years of plugins. Uh, and by the way, would you like to see the first handout for the original plugin roundup? I do happen to have that and I wasn't planning on showing it, but I will. Here it is. This is October. 2014, look at that, WP Mandrill. Anybody remember that one? Uh, Broken Link Manager, yeah. Smart Donations, I don't remember that one. Smart Donation for Stripe. Resp a responsive Pricing Table, remember those things? Uh, Gravity Form Zero Spam, which is actually on our list again today because it's one of my favorite plugins and we haven't talked about it since nine years ago. How about that? Uh, Gravity Forms Personality Quiz. Uh, adapter, gravity. I guess we like gravity forms a lot. That first one adapter WP subscribe. Yeah, that was it. So, uh, some of these plugins are still around, uh, but that was the link way back on October, 2014. And, uh, wow. Been a while. It's been a while. Okay. Let's start off this month with a really fun plugin called alt text generator AI. Now, the WordPress plugin directory is full of many, many, many AI-oriented uh, plugins. Everybody has their own way now of dropping ChatGPT. 
our open AI's API into WordPress. They're all very similar, but this, this is really, I think, helpful uh, because what this plugin will actually do is uh, you have to connect it up with uh, an API key and there is a cost to this. So generally, let me just put a pause here. Generally, we don't um, add plugins to our list that require connection to an external API in order to function. That's just one of the things we use to, to rule out certain plugins from being in the roundup. We want these to be pretty free, uh, but this is good enough to where I really think you might want to take a look at this. And so we broke our own rule. I, I, you know, I have the right to do that. Host prerogative, right? Uh, and we're going to share this one with you because what this is going to do, once you connect it out to the API at Alt Text Generator, uh, it's going to look at your media library and do this. So we'll take a quick look here. Uh, as we look at this, there's my, <laughs> at least probably three quarters of my API key. Good luck capturing that. Uh, so it says, all right, I have 38 images that don't have alt text, which is about a third of my library. Uh, I ran the free version and it processed eight images uh, in the media library and take a look what it did. It looks at the images, does some image recognition and suggests some alt text. So look here, here's the cover of my book, a picture of a monster with a big smile on its face. That's pretty good. Uh, how about here? A group of people standing in the middle of the road. Okay, not so good on this one. It didn't recognize uh, who some of these Marvel characters were. Uh, so that one was not great, but you could edit it right here if you wanted. A man in a suit with two lights in his hands. All right, so it kind of struggled with Iron Man here. Uh, I mean, it's not wrong. It's just not quite as descriptive as I would like. Uh, here's a white kitten with blue eyes looking at the camera. That's pretty good. A close-up of bugs on a rock. All right. A painting of a lake surrounded by mountains. So this is AI generated. And so it actually recognized that this is in the style of a painting, and it described it pretty well. Uh, a cartoon of a man holding a bunch of dogs. Yeah, okay. Now this is what's, look at this one. Uh, so here is an image with some text in it. I, who knows what we even use this for, but it was in the media library. A red background with the words mid-season sale. So that's really great. Um, anyway, so this was the test. And then so you can uh, either delete these and say, ah, forget it, or you can confirm those at which time this plugin would write uh, these alt text um, uh, entries into the image. Uh, or, you know, right here, we can edit that right here before we confirm them. Uh, yeah, so I, I like this one a lot. This, you know, if you've got a giant media library full of images, this is a pretty good way to get reasonably decent alt text placed on all those images without a human having to take a look and write descriptions. Um, so it it can, the pricing is not terrible. It starts at, uh, uh, so 10, it, one credit per evaluation of an image, then a hundred more start at $17. And let's just grab the actual pricing because it does decrease. Where's the bulk price? There's more. Hmm. Well, there were. Oh, I'm logged in. Hang on, let's log out and look at pricing. They may have just changed this since yesterday. Interesting, because there was bulk pricing yesterday. Okay, so now it's 100 for $17. There we go. Yeah, it went down like a, a thousand was $77. Uh, so that's pretty good. Um, so, I mean, you think about it, how long is it going to take you or what would it cost you to hire somebody to actually add that alt text? A lot more than this. So this is pretty good. Pretty good. All right, so that is Alt Text Generator AI. Pretty cool. Uh, Phoebe, does it update the page where the image is used? Just putting alt text in the image in the media library doesn't mean the image on the page now has alt text. Uh, that is correct. So, well, it depends. It depends on how the image is placed. Um, in the block editor, I think it, it depends on what how you're placing the image on the page. 
So you'd have to test that. Yeah, and of course you can test it with 10 images at no cost. So I would just recommend that you give it a test. So pretty good little application here. I mean, there's likely others like this. This is you know, certainly something other people are going to try to take advantage of, uh, but it's pretty cool. I like it. All right, any other questions, comments? All right, let's scroll down the list to Gravity Form Zero Spam, the plugin that I mentioned, one of the plugins originally featured nine years ago uh, on uh, the first plugin roundup, and it's still excellent. I've been using it all that time, uh, and it, it works so, so very well. So let's take a quick look at this. Uh, Gravity Form Zero. Now, if you're not a Gravity Forms user, this is not going to help you. And I'm not aware of something similar for other form plugins, but uh, Gravity Form Zero Spam is active. And generally speaking, for most sites, you can just activate it and you're done. That's literally all you have to do. And we just don't get form spam as a result of this. Uh, I put in, <laughs> I put right here, um, blocks virtually all spam form entries in Gravity Forms using magic. Because as far as I'm concerned, that's what it's using. Uh, it, it's just magic and it works. And I don't know how exactly or why, but it does such a great job. Uh, so let's just take a quick look at some of the settings here, uh, which you can uh, deal with. And it's located under gravity forms, settings, and zero spam. Uh, there's an enable disable toggle here. Uh, and it is, by the way, it is perf it, it's global on all your forms. So you don't have to enable it. Um, uh, specifically for each form, you just normally you just activate it and it's going to start working right away with no other settings. It does let you do some different things though. So when entries are flagged as spam, what do you want to do with it? Do you want to get notified? I don't want to get notified. So I usually disable that. That's the default setting. Uh, and really that's all you have to do. So what happens is let's just go to uh, one of these uh, entries. Let's go to this contact form. All right, so we've got we've gotten ten spam entries. So there's a it adds up here at the top this spam uh, status for in this garbage, 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 right? Uh, but I never saw it. It doesn't send a form notification uh, and so forth. So uh, this is um, works really well. So Gravity Forms Zero Spam it is way way gobs and gobs better than the Gravity Forms Honey Pot setting. Uh, and you don't have to put a CAPTCHA on the forms, which is just really annoying. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we pull CAPTCHA off of forms and just use this, and it works great. So that is Gravity Forms Zero Spam, and that only, yeah, Paul, only works with Gravity Forms. It's uh, a Gravity Forms-specific solution. Uh, and Melanie is right. Gravity Kit is an excellent uh, developer in the Gravity Forms ecosystem. They just do a great job. Any other questions or comments on this? That again is Gravity Forms Zero Spam, one of the original plugins featured on the very first plugin roundup nine years ago this month. All right. You know what? I neglected to start the transcript, of course. So let me get that going. Sorry about that, y'all. I normally remember that, and I did not do that today. Take me just a second, and we'll get that going, and then we'll go right back. All right, here we go. So sorry about that. Got uh, a little bit late getting the caption started, but they should be working now for everybody. Okay. So scrolling on down the list to our next plugin is another Gravity Forms plugin. This one is interesting. Uh, if you have a use case for this, you're going to love this plugin. Uh, and again, this is just a Gravity Forms add-on, but uh, we love Gravity Forms here. And this is a really interesting add-on for Gravity Forms called Embed PDF by The Breakfast Company. Uh, so basically what this will allow you to do is within a form, embed a preview of a PDF. So imagine it could be like terms and conditions. It could be uh, a design preview of something like a, you know, like a, a graphic design layout or something that 
you want someone else to see uh, as part of the gravity forms form process. So let's take a look at this and you'll see what I mean. So I think we have a form just for this. Uh, oh, well, it would also help if I activated the plugin. This, by the way, the biggest takeaway of today's live stream is plugins must be activated in order to be used. Uh, that's an ongoing lesson that I seem to learn during the plugin roundup. Uh, okay, so uh, right here is a product registration form. And uh, right here we have this test PDF viewer and it is present over here as an advanced uh, module. So you can just drag it over like any other. And once it's in, you can, you know, give it, call it whatever you want to call it, just like any other Gravity Forms field. But then uh, you have the opportunity to choose a PDF. Now, there's an issue here uh, where this doesn't work. Like click, 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 click. Nothing's happening here. You can rage click it all you want. Nothing happens. I dropped in a little support note about that in the support forum for the plugin yesterday. I haven't heard back. Um, but uh, anyway, what we ended up doing here was just pasting the direct link and it works fine. Little bugaboo uh, with that code that's popping this open, but uh, you could just drop in the URL. It can even be an external URL as long as it's publicly viewable. So that's pretty cool. Like you could put a Dropbox or maybe not. I don't know if a Dropbox link would work or not. It probably has to be an actual PDF file, uh, but it can live anywhere, not just on this WordPress site. So once this is all set up, I've got a demo page set up for this embed let's take a look at it so here is our let's just say product registration whatever you want to call it and right here in the middle of our pdf is this viewable uh, in the middle of our form is this viewable pdf look at that you can zoom in you can zoom out navigable um, and the other thing that they say is really interesting, this supposedly supports dynamic population, uh, which means if you're familiar with gravity forms, you can dynamically populate a field with, you know, a, a function or a query string, or there's various ways to do this. But like this could be like you could, we haven't tested this, we haven't tried it, but it appears that what can happen here is it could pull the PDF link out of a custom field on say the logged in user's record. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Like you could go to the form and it's already pre-baked to pull, you know, from a custom field. Anyway, there's a lot of possibilities here, um, you know, to, to use this. So uh, you could use this for all sorts of things. Um, Barney's asking like contract changes that you could do that. I, I don't know, I, like I want the person's signature on a contract. Uh, so I wouldn't personally use this for a document signing type system because there's no way to know what PDF was actually viewed when the, when the form was submitted. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, this is interesting. And there's, there's, some, um, there's some interesting use cases here. I've never seen anything like this, but I like it. And that's why we highlighted it here. So this is embed PDF for Gravity Forms. Uh, any other questions or comments on that one? Pretty cool. Hopefully they'll get that button working, but it's not a big deal. All right, scrolling down the list. Okay, this is this month's most dangerous plugin of the roundup. Uh, we should play the Jaws theme uh, when we're talking about this, but this one has some really great practical time-saving uses because how many of you, uh, if you're managing a WooCommerce site, how many of you uh, struggle with this product got deleted, but there's still a dozen images in the media library that were attached to this product, the product image and all the gallery images, and they're just in the media library. And it's virtually impossible to go in there and, and just, you know, and wipe those images out. And so my media library keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, that is what this GN product and image remover plugin is aiming to change. Now, this, what this is going to do is when you delete a product, there's no settings, you just activate the plugin. 
But when you delete a product, this plugin is going to look at all the other products in the store and see uh, if the image, like the product you delete, the featured image for that product and all the gallery images for that product, if those images aren't used on any other products in the store, it will delete those images from the media library when you trash the, when the product is emptied out of the trash. So that's pretty cool. That could be a gigantic time saver. Now, this does not, uh, there's some caveats here. So if you have put an image in the product description, the shorter long description, it doesn't look at those. It also doesn't see if that image is used in any other kind of post type. So if you've taken this product image and it's in a blog post or it's a featured image on some other custom post type or some other page, it, it doesn't look at that. It's only looking at products. But if, you know, if it's a typical store and your product images are only used on products, then you know, when you delete a product, it, the featured image and any gallery images that are in that product will be deleted um, if they're not used anywhere else. So let me just show you how this works. Uh, let's do a quick product. And I accidentally, did I, have I deleted my test image? I bet I did. Yes. Okay. Let me go grab my test image really quickly here. Where did it go? Well, well, we'll just use this one. This was an original. Okay, so we'll just do test. And I'm going to set this product image, which was the first AI generated nine birthday cake. <laughs> we'll publish this. All right, so our library now has this image. Uh, and if I go in here and I trash this product, nothing has happened yet. The image is still here. But if I go into my products and I empty the trash, it deletes that, hello. Seriously? Womp womp. Like this worked all day yesterday. Oh, wait. You know what we didn't do? Uh, yeah, we have to have the plugin activated. Oh, in nine years, I wonder what the over under is on how many times I have tried to test a plugin uh, without the plugin being active. So, well, actually, what I was just doing was demonstrating the default behavior of WordPress, right? Nothing gets deleted out of the media library if you know you don't. Yeah, that's if when you delete the product. So. Uh, anyway, let's do this again. So here's our product image. Boom, publish. Let's try this again, shall we? All right, so now we have, we're, it's there in the media library. Boom, uh, we're going to trash our product. And then we're going to empty the trash. And it's gone. Isn't that cool? Uh, but if it exists on other products, totally. So it does not delete it. Uh, but again, this is something you're definitely going to want to um, have a backup for before you start this process. Uh, I'm just going to add it to an existing product as a gallery image. And now if we go to delete our test product, because it is, because that image is on that other product in the gallery, uh, it's still going to be present. Yep. So that's how it works. Pretty cool. I think it's super helpful. Uh, Barney, can an image be recovered if deleted in error? No, deleted is permanently, right? So uh, permanently means permanently. Now there is a 
uh, constant you can define in your WP config uh, called enable media library trash or something. Yes. Enable media trash. I think it's called. Yeah, it's this. Uh, define, oh, there's my AI. Look at that. Define media trash true. Uh, and so that changes the default behavior of WordPress so that there's now a trash in the media library, just like there's a trash on other post types. Uh, I don't know if this plugin will put it in the trash. You'd have to test that, but I bet it would. You then have to go in and delete your media trash later, but that's, this is probably a good thing to do. Any other questions, comments about that one? So that is GN product and image remover, which you do have to have active in order for it to work. Yes. All right. <laughs> Moving down the list to the next one. Okay, this is a very simple plugin, but it can be very helpful uh, if uh, you need it for certain cases. So this is a plugin called Clickable. And basically what this does is it converts all the URLs on your site um, to clickable links. So if you have a site that maybe you inherited a site from somebody, because I'm sure none of you would build a site with, you know, HTTP, whatever in the text, and it's not clickable. Um, a lot of times these, these sites get, they happen because people have just copied and pasted from documents and links aren't clickable. Uh, and so what this does is if a URL appears in the text, uh, this automatically, it just, it's a jQuery that runs on page load. It turns that into a clickable link. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's just view this page. Uh, so on this page, we have some links. You know, here's google.com wordpress.org, wordpress.com, blah, blah, blah. If we go in here and we activate clickable, then those things become clickable, just like that. Now, this is not changing anything in the database. It is on page load with a very simple jQuery script that executes almost instantly. Uh, it's just scanning the text as it's rendering for anything that looks like a URL. And if it is, it makes that clickable. So there it is, and they work. If I deactivate clickable, then they're not clickable anymore. Go figure. Yeah, Melanie's right. Clients do this all the time. They they put the a URL out there. Uh, you know, and they, they you know a lot of folks just aren't sure how to make something clickable. So we have clickable. Uh, so pretty neat little plugin. Very simple jQuery. Which honestly, by the way, you could just get ChatGPT to write this for you which is a great segue into the premium event for this month, which is all about AI and WordPress. I'll be leading our AI, uh, our WordPress AI workshop at the end of this month for our members. And we're going to be talking about all the practical uses of AI and WordPress. Fun stuff. Okay, so that's clickable. Any other questions, comments on that one? Pretty neat little plugin, pretty handy. All right, down the list, another handy plugin. Uh, especially during development, is this one called Show Current Width. Now, I actually have a browser extension that does this. Um, let's see. So I've, there's this Chrome extension that I use. It's down here, it's going to show the inner viewport, which is kind of helpful. If you're trying to track, you know, at what point does something change? Um, uh, yeah, and Melanie's right. If you have the inspector open, it will show this as well. Uh, some place, let's see, where does it show that? I've seen it as well. Oh, at the top, up here at the top, it shows it. So, yeah, but I like this little Chrome extension, but this is something that will do it in WordPress. Uh, so show current width. This might be a plugin that, for example, in your base site, you could have show current width installed and activated. It just works. And then when we are looking at the front end of our site, right there it is, just right up there in the admin bar. Um, and every time you change the width, it calculates it right, right up there. Now, what are these breakpoints? These are actually, uh, those are the default ones. But it's all um, 
customizable. So in whatever platform you're working on, uh, you know, whatever the breakpoints are for your different sizes, you can actually go in and set those right here. So you just, you know, zero to 576 is XS or X small, you know, so you can set up the breakpoints for your setup so that you know on the front end where you are. So a pretty cool, right? Uh, so this is a great little plugin. I like this slide. And then you would just kind of delete that, um, you know, delete that when you uh, get ready to launch the site. I think it's a great little plugin. Uh, folks are asking about the name of that. Uh, let's see. It's, uh, it's called Viewport Dimensions is the name of that um, Chrome. I'm going to drop it in the chat. If you want the Chrome extension, there's the link right there. I've been using that for a long time. It works really well. But I do, I really like this because of the ability to very easily customize it to uh, your own viewports for your building purposes. So that's kind of cool. All right. Any other questions, comments? Show current width from Web83 Info. Good stuff. All right. Uh, next up on the list is a WooCommerce plugin called PDF Invoices and Packing Slips for WooCommerce. Now, we have this working for a client of ours who absolutely loves it. Uh, it's also super helpful if, you, um, you know, if, you're in a, if you're in a country, for example, that has a, a, the VAT tax, value-added tax, and you have to give an invoice with various details on it. This is a great way to just to set that up and be done with it. Because you, what this plugin is going to do is generate uh, an invoice and potentially a packing slip if you want that. We'll get to that in a minute. But if an invoice and actually attach that PDF to um, the, in, in the emails that go out, the ones you select. So without you don't have to do anything. It will just automatically generate and send that PDF. Uh, so it's really cool. This is a developer that's been in the WooCommerce space for a long time, WP Overnight. They're a good developer. Um, we've been using this one for years with a client and we really, really like it. And so do they PDF invoices and packing slips. So let's activate that. There are some settings right here under WooCommerce and PDF invoices. Uh, so it gives you, uh, some options here where it comes with a very simple template, which is all we ever, um, all we ever use. But if you want to really get into it, you can actually customize you know, putting things in your theme to actually customize the invoice, pretty good. You can select your paper size, A4 or letter, put it in test mode. You can add your shop logo if you want, set the basic height. Um, there's your shop name, terms and conditions, any extra fields. This is a premium um, feature. But once this is all set up, let's just go into orders and... Uh, if it's got a green check mark, it means it's already been generated for this one. Uh, I'm just going to generate a brand new one, PDF invoice, click it. And here's what it looks like. I mean, that's pretty nice. It's very straightforward, uh, but it'll give all the information that you need. Um, you know, if you've got to put that uh, information for the VAT, you can add all that in and you're good to go. Um, and it just works great. Now, uh, these... The ones that don't have a green check mark is because we just activated the plugin. Now it's, but at this point, you can tell it that you want to send. Let's see. Document. Okay. So I want to uh, enable attaching the invoice to all completed orders, for example. So when that completed order email goes out, the PDF would be automatically generated and attached to it. But you could do it for any of these statuses or all of them if you wanted. Um, you know, you could disable it. I don't quite understand that, but you can disable it on certain statuses. Uh, do you want to display the shipping? So anyway, it's got all these different options here, blah, 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 to set all that up. You've also got uh, some additional setting, uh, settings here. Uh, this will actually... Um, it restricts the access to the document to someone being logged in. But for example... Uh, the easiest thing, like if you don't care about that, you could, uh, it'll send the PDF link and you could just say full access. So somebody doesn't even have to be logged into your site. They can click that link 
from the email and it would open right up. It just depends on your privacy issues and, and whatnot. Uh, so a bunch of different, um, bunch of different notes here, options. Of course, there's a, a nag to upgrade to the premium, uh, which as I recall, wasn't terribly expensive. I forgot to put that note here in the listing. But we, we don't use the pro version and we like it just fine. It works really great for, whoops. Wow, why did that jump down the page? Uh, yeah, so 59 euros a year. And for what it does, generating those invoices saves a lot of time, a lot of manual effort. Uh, the other thing it will do is create a packing slip. So for people who are, you know, maybe they, they're, as they're fulfilling, they want a packing slip to just print out a bunch of packing slips and ship them. Uh, this would give you the packing slip, especially for things that are gifts. You know, it doesn't include the price there. So it's good stuff. We like this plugin a lot. If you run a WooCommerce store, definitely um, worth looking at. PDF invoices and packing slips for WooCommerce. Uh, any other questions or comments about this one? Good stuff. Melanie's using it with a client as well. Oh, this is also something good. It does uh, allow you to do sequential invoice numbers, which is nice. All right, next up. I am fully prepared to get hassled about this one. Uh, this is called Cover 3D. And those of you uh, who've been on recent live streams know just how much I hate flip books. Uh, just how much I hate. It is not a flip book. It is a flip cover. And that's different. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to get eight levels of hassle. And that's fine. That's fine. So this is funny. This is a great little book, uh, a great little book cover tool. Uh, to feature books, <laughs> feature books on your WordPress website. So let's take the first step and activate the plugin, shall we? Um, cover 3D. So I can envision this. Uh, you know, let's just say you have a list of recommended resources. This would be a wonderful way to make that a little more interactive, and you'll see what this looks like. So let's go and get our. Oh, y'all are so funny. Um, all right, so here's our page with our cover 3D, not flip book, but cover 3D. I mean, this is look at that. That's nice, okay? This looks really, really good. It does not flip. It doesn't flip. It turns, and that's different. So we could click, <laughs> we could click the, um, the block, and here, you know, we, can, we have the ability to drop in a link. How big do we want it to be? Big, medium, or small? Um, you know, what does the, the call to action say? I want to buy on Amazon. The back cover icon, we have a, a couple options of download or buy. We can set our colors. But here's what it looks like on the front end of the site. Uh, and I, I do like this one. Our, our image leaves a lot to be desired. So it does not flip. It turns. And uh, right there, you can buy on Amazon and link you right to it. I mean, it's pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, it does a good job doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, also, notice it is selectable. So if you're navigating with a keyboard, it is accessible as you're tabbing through things. I can hit enter and it goes to the link, which is nice. Uh, so there aren't accessibility issues with this one. Uh, yeah, so it, it's, you know, imagine a grid of books that, you know, you could just, Flip right through the list, not the book. It's a cover. It is a, it is a, it, it turns, it doesn't flip. Uh, so Phoebe, no, there is not, there, the only image you can upload is the, the cover image. The back cover is for the uh, call to action. Yeah, it doesn't actually let you see the back cover of the book. So that is cover 3D. <laughs> Also, I just want to tell you, this was a light month for plugins in the plugin directory. And uh, when Chris found this plugin, I said, please, no, please, no. And then I saw it. It's actually not pretty bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, you may be following the news that uh, there's a major backup in the WordPress plugin directory uh, for plugins being reviewed, which, um, you know, it, it has really 
diminish the number of plugins that we have available for the roundup. So hence cover 3D, but it's really, I kind of like it. I just knew I was going to get hassle from you people. Okay. <clears throat> Next up is a tab plugin called tabbed content block. Tabbed content block. So let's activate that. There are many tabs for the block editor. Many, many tabs available, and this is one of them. It's actually pretty decent as far as tabs go. Uh, I like this because it gives you, uh, we have this really kind of out of the box design for these tabs here. Um, kind of like that. It's a little different. Uh, so that's one of the reasons we featured this one. Cadence, of course, has an excellent tab block uh, in the Cadence Blocks plugin, which we really like. Uh, it's a more traditional design. This gives you some more options. Uh, and it lays out very nicely here where there's a nested, you know, the tabs block, an individual tab, and then the content is, you know, so it's really nice and easy to browse over here in list view. And then you can, you know, change up all of your uh, various settings over here. Got lots of different controls. So uh, again, I mean, it, it's a tab block. It, it works. It, it's pretty simple, straightforward to use. You know, if we want to add something else, you just like using the block editor. Uh, so that is tabbed content block. Works really well. Uh, as with many tabs, accessibility is generally an issue. So we try to avoid tabs as much as possible when building sites. Uh, but sometimes it's called for, sometimes your client requires it. And uh, this is a good option. Uh, of course, Cadence tabs, also a good option. Uh, tabbed content block. Any qu other questions or comments on that one? Pretty straightforward. Okay. Everybody loving the tabs today, I can tell. All right, next down the list. Okay. This is one that I put in just because I hate, I hate when plugins, for whatever reason, like, and we see this a lot when we're testing for the plugin roundup, you'll have this really simple plugin that doesn't do a whole lot, and it puts its menu item right above dashboard, or right below dashboard in your plugin area, or in your, in your WordPress admin bar, like right at the top, this self-important plugin that does nothing but wants the top real estate, that just bothers me as a whole. Uh, and so here's a plugin that seeks to deal with that issue, which probably only I have. So I guess this plugin was written for me. Uh, so basically what this does is it's going to take all the core WordPress menu items and push those to the top. And then any menu items added by plugins get put down underneath that. So uh, that's what it does, and I, I, I don't mind this at all. I kind of like it. So notice here we've got, you know, WooCommerce is up in there. We got this embed press and all these other things down here. When we activate this, all of our core is here, and even those custom post types and things get put down here. Uh, so our core WordPress menu items, which are dashboard to settings, all float up to the top, and then uh, down below go the rest. Heather is wondering if the developer would expand the plugin to allow the admin to choose where to put the additional plugins. Um, I'm pretty sure there are plugins that will let you do that. Um, a lot of the white label type plugins uh, will do that. This is such a simple plugin. <laughs> My guess is, I, mean, I think this is a single file, uh, yeah, a single file plugin. Let me just take a quick look. Uh, pretty sure this is not something that the developer is likely to do. Yeah, it's a single PHP file, and it's probably just like one function. Like, this is one of those things where, you could just, yeah, it's, it is a single function basically that, now there's a couple of them, but it's basically pushing all the things. Like you could take that and drop it in your functions.php and it would work. It's just a hundred lines. Um, it's very simple. I, I don't know that the, that's something that would be on the plugin developer's radar, maybe. Um, 
But there you go. Yeah, Active Installations 10. This is Plugin Roundup. Like, this is a brand new plugin. It was only, it was launched three days ago or updated three days ago. But yeah, the, a lot of these plugins are, you know, the, our purpose in this roundup is oftentimes to bring very little known or brand new plugins to the light. So you can see some of these things. Yeah, so you'll see active installs very low on some of these until they get some traction. All right, uh, other questions or comments on this one? Okay, moving down the list, we ran into this plugin uh, in the last month or two uh, because we were trying to solve a problem for a client and we really liked this plugin. Uh, so embed press, uh, the whole purpose of this plugin is to make it easier to embed external things into WordPress. Uh, and so WP Developer is, uh, they have a lot of plugins uh, whose names you might recognize. Uh, WP Developer, I believe, yeah, they're the ones that took over the Disable Comments plugin uh, and some other plugins you might uh, notice as well. But what Embed Press does is like you just paste in the URL and it knows what to do with stuff. It's really cool. So for example, uh, you can copy the URL from the Google map and it just pops in. You don't have to go and get the embed code. It just pops it in there on your page. Google Docs, Form Sheets, Google Calendar, for ones that are publicly available, it'll just pop it right in there without you having to have all the iframe code and all that stuff. It just knows what to do with the link. It will also embed Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and PDF files uh, from the media library or external sources. You just drop in the URL and it knows what to do with them. Facebook posts and videos. You can copy the Facebook URL. It'll embed it right there. Audio from Spotify and SoundCloud and other sources. Videos from YouTube, Wistia, Vimeo, Twitch, Hulu, Ted. Some of those are already O-embed sources like Vimeo. You can drop a video in and it knows what to do. Uh, but the, like what uh, drew us to this plugin was Wistia. Now, Wistia is like Vimeo. It's a little more marketing oriented. It has better analytics on how much of a video somebody watched, that sort of thing. But it is ridiculously hard to embed. Oh my goodness. I mean, it's like v Wistia wants to keep you from embedding the video. It's just so complicated. It doesn't, it's just weird why they wouldn't make it easier to embed into WordPress or just open up O-embed for heaven's sakes. But anyway, we found this plugin, dropped it in, Wistia embeds just right away with the URL. It works great. You simply paste that link in the content area. It works in block editor, classic editor, Elementor. If, if you activate this plugin, it will add a module to Elementor if you use that. Or you can create a short code for any other page builder or anything else. And with a short code, it'll drop in. Uh, it has many settings, which we're going to look at in a minute. And it even supports WPML, which is really good. Pro version, $39 a year, and even gives you more features. So let's take a quick look at this embed press. Oh, it's already active. Uh, let's just jump in here really fast so you can see all the things. It's got a really nice, nicely designed settings page. So you can set up your default embed width and height. Uh, it does have lazy load, but that's a pro feature. Uh, you can turn on your uh, custom colors for the wrapper of your PDF. So you can brand that to match your site. Uh, if you want to generate a short code to display, like say you're using a page builder uh, that's not Elementor and you wanna be able to embed something, uh, you just drop in the link and hit generate and it'll give you the short code to drop in your page builder. Um, there's, it has various settings for each of these platforms. Like how do you want your YouTube videos to look? Well. Drop in your, you, you, don't, you don't have to use this. Uh, you don't have to use a YouTube API key to embed with this, but if you want to customize it, drop in your API key, you can change videos per page. You know, it, it, you get spec, uh, specified settings for each of these sources. Um, here in the elements area, you can turn on and off what you actually want to embed. Like if for some reason you don't want somebody to embed Vimeo, you can toggle that off and it won't work. Um, so here's your uh, um, objects for Elementor, if you use Elementor. Um, classic, this is really cool. The classic editor settings, do you want to preview it in the editor itself, in the classic editor? Sometimes you don't want to, because it gets a little junky in there. Uh, or just preview on the front end, and that's it. Uh, so you got a lot of different options there. And let's take a look at some 
things that we created with embed press just so you can see a few things. Um, look, let's look at the page. So first here's a PDF embed. So it's a really nice clean PDF embed. Somebody was asking about this in an office hours recently, I think. Um, yeah, this is a really nice clean PDF embedder. Uh, here is a, um, this is, I believe it's a, yeah, it's a Reddit link, which it'll come back in a minute. Here is, uh, this is a Facebook image that I posted. Uh, so I just, you know, went to my profile, clicked on a, a, a photo that I had shared. And um, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell, you what, tell you what that happens to be in a minute, but just took the URL and dropped it in. Now on Facebook, it does have to be something that's shared publicly, of course, in order for it to show up. But uh, take a look at the front end and how this looks. <clears throat> it's pretty darn nice. So there's our PDF viewer. And again, we can set the width of that or just, you know, restrict it even uh, with inside of a row layout to get the sizing right. But it, it'll scroll all the way down through the pages or we can scroll down. Here's our Reddit embed. That's pretty nice. Here's the Facebook uh, image. This was, <laughs> we use YouTube TV and I was watching uh, the, the new YouTube TV now has four up. So you can watch four football games all at one time, which is awesome, except for all, you know, four commercials on at the same time a couple of weeks ago or last weekend. It was ridiculous. Um, but anyway, embeds real nicely, including even the, um, you know, the commentary there. So it's a great little plugin. It is called Embed Press. Highly recommended. Uh, Ronnie, can it embed video from a cloud storage space like Box or Dropbox? Um, I don't know. Haven't tried that. You'd have to try it. It doesn't say Dropbox specifically. And actually, hang on a minute. I happen to have a video in Dropbox that we can try and let's just see what happens. So if we just uh, embed press URL, embed. Womp, womp. Nope, <laughs> that didn't work. You might have to experience experiment with some of the settings. It didn't list Dropbox and it listed many, many different sources. So I would just recommend playing with it. Uh, Sue, no, you can select which audio stream you want on that four up view. All right. Questions or comments on that one? That's embed press. We like that one a lot. All right. Scrolling on down the list to, oh, y'all, these next two plugins are awesome. Uh, string locator. So uh, string locator, we, I, I, I ran across it trying to solve a problem for a client. Um, what this, so I, I was happy, we were having this error show up in our log <clears throat> about uh, some, it was a, it was a PHP, it was a WooCommerce PHP function that was being called, but it was, had been deprecated and it was showing up like we had a like an 800 megabyte error log. It was massive and just all full of this error. Um, and so it, but the error didn't tell, a lot of times the errors will tell you the location, you know, on this something.php line 23 or whatever. This one didn't do that. And a lot of times it doesn't. And what string locator will actually let you do is search through all the files in your WordPress installation for a string of text. So we, put in this function name and search through the whole site, WordPress themes, plugins, everything to be able to find that uh, function. And we found it. So let me just get it up here just so you can see. Uh, I don't really have a good way to demo this. We can just try. We'll search for something and see what happens. This is a great plugin to keep in your back pocket for these sorts of cases where you're having trouble finding something in WordPress. It's like a code level contents of the PHP file of all the PHP files in WordPress search. Uh, and it's really, really cool. So I think, yeah, it's here under tools, string locator. All right, so where do I wanna search? Look here, uh, everything, everything, anything under WP content, only my theme, all my themes, my, only the theme that's active, specific plugins, uh, all database tables or just everything, right? So let's search for, oh gosh, I don't know. Um, I need to search for something. What do I search? Let's just search for embed press. 
I don't know what's going to come up with here. You can you also do a regex search if you want. So let's search. Obviously, by the way, this might take a little while. I did the whole WordPress directory. Uh, I think the last search I did on a fairly large site took a couple of minutes, but it's right at this moment, it's searching through every single file in the WordPress installation, all the themes, all the plugins, core WordPress for this string of text called embed press. Uh, and again, you can use uh, a regular expression in here if you want. Still going. Maybe we'll come back to this one in just a minute. Uh, but that string locator, it, it can be very, very useful as you're diagnosing issues. Questions or comments about that one? Will it find affiliate links? If the links are in the database somewhere, yes. Uh, you would select all database tables, which was the bottom choice here. I can't click it now. But the bottom, wait, it's still doing its thing. Uh, yeah, database is, is the last option on the list. Yep. But really what this is after, uh, like what it's doing right now is searching for uh, through the actual files in the WordPress install. Yeah. Hmm. Taking a little while. All right, we'll come back to that. Hopefully it'll show back up. Any other questions or comments on this one? String locator, definitely one for your toolbox. Don't forget about this one. All right, last but not least is another oldie, but a goodie. Uh, user menus, which was previously called nav menu visibility from Code Atlantic. My friend Daniel Iser is the developer of this plugin. Uh, we use this everywhere. Uh, and I always would forget nav menu visibility. And I would, I would say, which is the one with the buffalo on it? Because that's the one I want. Uh, and it's such a great plugin. It keeps getting better. Uh, so how many of you saw, uh, let me get this up here. Uh, solid when we did the preview of the solid academy uh, some of you haven't seen this at all because we've been doing this on office hours but here's the new solid academy site which will be launched in the next few weeks um and we've got this really cool avatar up here right like it it pulled my gravatar and it knows i'm a logged in user and i've got this really neat little menu item up there that's just my face um that's user menus that does this. So check this out. Um, hung. Let's activate user menus. Hmm. I may have killed WordPress. I have confused. Oh, no, there it goes. Okay, good. All right. Uh, user menus. There we go. I think we'll kill this tab and come back to string locator. All right, we're going to skip that. Okay, now first out of the gate, this the, the first things I'm going to show you here are what user menus has done forever, which, and, and we've, we've used this for all sorts of things. So like, if you have a membership site where certain menu items only need to show up if a user is logged in, this is a fantastic plugin to do that. And it's so easy. Uh, so right here, for all of your menu links, there's this new little drop down called who can see this link? Everybody. So it shows up for anybody, no matter what. Only logged out users. Uh, or is it going to be logged in users? And if I choose that, now which roles can see this link or which roles won't see this link? So let's just say I want the only administrators and editors to be able to see that link. So that's what it does it shows and hides menu items based on what you set here. Now, not only that, but over here uh, in our list of menu item types, we have three different user links, uh, menu item types that user links creates. So if we add these to our menu, login is only gonna show if you're logged out. Log out is only gonna show if you're logged in. You can also set where should the person be redirected to if they log in or log out right here? Uh, and this, by the way, the log out link 
does put the appropriate nonce code at the end of the link so that it doesn't say, are you sure you want to log out? It just logs you out. Uh, and there's a register link that'll take you right to, you know, uh, the register page. So if we uh, save this and take a quick look at the front end of our site, we'll see up here on our menu bar that I'm already logged in. So there's a log out menu. And if I log out, it'll let me log back in. It's really simple and cool. But also, uh, what you may not have seen is that at some point in the fairly recent past, I'm not sure when, they've added all these magic tags. So you can show the user's avatar by simply putting in the avatar tag or their username, first name, last name, display name, nickname, email, whatever uh, up in there. So watch this. We can just very simply put, uh, let's add a custom link to nowhere and call the link avatar and add that to the menu. And when you put the nav label avatar, you now have the ability to put a size in. I mean, if I take this out, then that goes away. It's just watching for that. And let's make it 50 pixels. And if I save that up here, I'm going to have my avatar. There it is. And you can add CSS to this to make it round or do whatever you want. Um, on, the, on this site, this is simply another menu that has menu items under it. But look how that's just very friendly, isn't it? To be able to put um, you know, your account, my account, for example, on um, you know, uh, uh, any commerce page or whatever. Uh, OK, good question. What happens if you've turned off avatars in WP Config? See, I'm not sure how you turn off avatars in WP Config, but there's ways to disable that. Or if you don't, if the current user doesn't have a Gravatar set up, let me just see. I haven't tested this, but you know, obviously this is a fake email address. Let's do we have user switching on here? Let me take a quick look. We'll switch over to that user and see what happens. I think it'll probably just put like a first letter of a last name. I don't have user switching. Let's add that one really quick. Let's just switch to this uh, fake user. Okay, it puts a mystery man up there. Well, that's not ideal. Uh, Melanie's saying profile press is a great way to allow users to upload avatars. Yeah, so, and oh, and by the way, you can change your avatar uh, on your profile. So in, in WordPress, you can change that. You can, there's, there's other plugins that let you do that on the front end. Uh, so if you're building out a membership site, you could you know, set this, there, there are plugins that would let you set up an avatar on the front end. Melanie's mentioning profile press, uh, but what a nice little extra touch on a membership site to have the person's um, Gravatar or avatar or whatever. I would just tell people to go register a Gravatar if they haven't already. Like pretty easy to do. And that way it shows up on multiple sites. So anyway, uh, oh yes, also what we can do here is uh, you can stack things on that menu item. So there's avatar and we can say, um, you're welcome. You can stack those things. I mean, that's not awesome, but you get the idea. It'll echo things out right there. Yeah, so user menus is super powerful. Uh, it just keeps getting better. I really, really like this one. Uh, the feature set for a free plugin is just excellent. So any questions or comments about that? I'm gonna go back to string locator and see if we can revive our previous search in the meantime. All right, there we go. So there's all the things where it found embed press in the 
you know, within the plugin itself. So there's the file, line number, line position. Pretty cool. There's because of this, I probably that was a bad thing to look for because there's 8 million instances of embed press in that plugin. <laughs> but you get the idea how that works. All right. That brings us to the end of the October 2023 ninth anniversary edition of our plugin roundup. So we end with the question that we always end with, which is, what was your favorite plugin of the roundup? One vote, one vote only, please. What was your favorite plugin of the roundup? Show current with embed press, PDFs, embed press, user menus, embed press, getting the love today. Embed press, embed press. Phoebe loves 3D cover. Yay. Chris, that one's for you. Uh, user menus, embed press by landslide. User menus looks like the second. <laughs> yeah, embed press by a mile. Yeah, and user menus a distant second. Any other votes? Quickly, quickly in the chat. One vote, one vote only, please. All right, embed press is the winner. User menus way back in the distant second. All right, uh, let me mention one more time. If you were late coming in, we had a, uh, a brand new webinar scheduled on Friday. Normally, we like to give more time to promote than this, but uh, my intention is to start uh, a, another series of webinars each month called the WordPress Security Roundup featuring my friend Thomas Rafe from We Watch Your Website. Uh, Thomas and his company manage over 6 million WordPress sites uh, looking at their security. And so Tom is on the cutting edge of emerging threats into WordPress security. So he's the guy to talk to about this stuff. And he has graciously agreed to uh, come be part of a couple of test webinars to see if this WordPress security roundup is something that will take. Uh, so we're going to try that. We're going to try it tomorrow. And we also have a uh, the first Tuesday, Wednesday of November, I think, scheduled for the second one. But uh, come check it out. Uh, he, uh, Tom and I have talked about some little kind of scary <laughs> new threats that are happening in the WordPress security world. And he'll be talking about that tomorrow uh, and uh, should be a really good conversation. And of course, Tom Rafe is an expert in WordPress security. You can ask all your security related questions to him as well. That's going to do it for us today. I'm back tomorrow for this WordPress security roundup. One o'clock central time here on iThemes Training, where we go further together.